ended up with mods. Now, when I'm going through the archives, I see mod, and I see mods. So okay. they, they kind of did it both ways back in the early 1900s. So, and we're going to talk a little bit about the, the, uh, the importance of the railroad tomorrow and what it brought into here and into along the way. Westchester and here. You know that part? No, uh, um, yeah. no. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, and also you told me there was a mill down here. Yeah. So maybe we could talk a little oh, bit. Oh, some mill. Now the uh, store was there, but there's a sawmill. So it was really a thriving oh, little no. community. As yeah, you grew up, yeah. Right? The uh, well, this before, was long before this. Would be back when 1900. Okay. Cause I passed away oh. beforehand. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, I'll start with uh, our family. Uh, Grandpa Williams, named George Dallas Williams, and his mother was his wife was Laura Virginia Cole. They came here in the late 1890s, probably 1898 or 99. Had, four, had five sons, Jesse, Cleveland, Irving, Asa, and our dad, Carol. Now, Irving, he died uh, in 1905, and uh, at age of 20, he's buried in, in a cemetery. And uh, all the rest of them are buried there, too, because they died just later. <laughs> and they first came here, they lived in the um, house on 2nd Street until they were the first house on the left and up 2nd Street. They lived there for I don't know how many years, a couple of years, maybe then uh, moved to a farm uh, owned by a man named Hughes, which is right now the, the western part of Weatherington. And they farmed there until 1907, and they bought the house on, uh, on Thousandville Road at the end of 3rd Street. And that's where uh, we were all raised, were born and raised. And the uh, oldest brother was Carol Lee Jr. He was born in 1922. There was Clyde in 1920, or he was born in 21, rather. Kyde in 1922, uh, John in 1923, Bay in 1926, uh, May James was 1930, Ernie in 1931, Eleanor in 1932, and she passed away in 35, and Frank, our youngest brother, was born in 1937. So that's where it all started. Uh, Dad, of course, he had opened a uh, store uh, at the Road tracks down here. Big brick building across the street from the uh, depot, and he uh, started a store there in 1912. And then with a partner called Ernie Moore, and Ernie Moore sold out to Fred Bohr sometime between there and, and uh, 1917, I guess. Then 1918, when Dad was drafted in the army, he sold his half of the store to Fred, and, and then that became uh, operated for about 30 years as board for the store in uh, that location originally. And then they moved the store down to the uh, Corner of Cincinnati Dayton Road and uh, Collinsville Road, and it's been, that building was there until 1980s. Now, what else you want to know? <laughs> well, I want to kind of name some mod. Okay. Well, Maud's Rizzi was always been called Maud. It was named after a family uh, of Maud. They had uh, two brothers, and they owned uh, pretty much most of the land all around Maud. And they, uh, one was named William, and I what the other was named. And they, uh, was, they called it Maud. And when the railroad came through, uh, in 1911, they called it MUDs. In fact, the sign on the depot was always on MUDs. And then also would be uh, one of those MUD stations. And more primarily, uh, most of the people who lived here was always one of those MUDs. But on the map and everything, the outsiders were probably always MUD. So uh, that's why it wasn't until it took the signs down. There was another name for I that. thought they, uh, okay. was that name? Okay. She hears yeah. some of these letters. The address on them is MUDs. M U D S. Yeah. So I said, see, we all. And this is. This yeah. Well, the railroad came through oh, in 1911. These are letters that Dad wrote. What kind of change did make in Maud? Well, probably the first railroad they built was they had a bike called Dayton Short Line. It went from Cincinnati, uh, I guess, to Dayton. And uh, I understand they, uh, uh, then they had, they had a uh, sawmill and some other uh, grain type place. And they had, always had a store. They had a, uh, an inn uh, run by. Uh, Steinman, it was an inn and a bar and like a hotel, I suppose, and many people lived there, or stayed there. In fact, her mom, she worked there for uh, six or seven years, first as a maid, then she was a cook. And uh, uh, I understand that on the older railroad, uh, uh, they had a roundhouse uh, down by where the Hunter's restaurant is now. And that would, and they, uh, they could bring the trains, they, they could get turn the trains around, turn the wheel, get to the trains. And, Turn send back to the Cincinnati or wherever the trains head into. And uh, but at uh, one time, uh, Maud supposedly was a pretty thriving little village, and uh, probably probably may have been the largest 
uh, town in the, uh, in the township back before 1900. And uh, often, I, uh, Watt made my grandfather come to Ohio because he was in Mar from Maryland. And I asked him one time, I said, gee, I said, uh, of all the places to go, what made him get on, you know, get on a train, come to the system daddy and get on and go back to Mars, you know. He said, well, he didn't really know, but he said he was too young when this happened. He's only uh, six or seven. But then I read uh, too long ago that uh, Union Township was settled by a lot of people from Maryland. That's probably what he did. He got his friends or acquaintance. He must know somebody to make him come here, you know. So uh, I never knew why he did until, uh, in fact, I just read this in the paper that uh, the last couple of months of reading the of the history. So the uh, one other thing to note is that uh, uh, mud has been plied out. Uh, by the one meant you like the middle 1850s mud at all. And a lot real small. There's only 50 or 40 or 50 foot furniture on them. And then you go very deep, 170 feet. So all these houses back on, uh, look, I'm second, third, and first street, you see them all, all real small houses and everything. And uh, but this side of the street, on the north side of the tower, it was plotted. And uh, but the house, the place where we lived, uh, I uh, understand, was the original first schoolhouse that was in the area. And it was a log cabin schoolhouse, and it sat on just a little bit over an acre, a little bit less than half an acre. And when they built the uh, schoolhouse down here on the corner of uh, Second Street and Tazo Road. Uh, and of course, the old schoolhouse went uh, uh, tore down, apparently. And then uh, the, the schoolhouse on the Second Street was a uh, good size. It was uh, two stories and had uh, uh, probably six rooms in it. And I, I guess that was in operation until they opened up the Union School at Westchester in 1917. That's when they closed all these uh, small one-room schools throughout the township and all around. What kind of economical influence the railroad have in Maud? Uh, well, probably uh, uh, quite a bit. Well, many of the people living in Maud worked at the, either on the railway directly here in, in, in Maud or on the Shen Yards. In fact, probably, uh, I'd probably say 60% of the people, the men, worked on the railroad. The biggest thing, uh, uh, of course, that the main uh, didn't have many trains stop here on the way, but uh, one, or, one or two locals, so the, the traffic, uh, train traffic wasn't didn't have much of a factor, but it was a uh, uh, that did employ uh, quite a few people. So, did you get work the railroad? Yeah, 37 years. 37 years. So what, what was his position? Well, it was started just just a second hand, and then it seemed funny. Uh, uh, Uncle Jess was a foreman, and uh, and they they were somebody got an argument with the road superintendent, and uh, he didn't do what he wanted. They fired him. <laughs> Dad replaced him, <laughs> and it was then he became, he was a section he was a section foreman then for. Uh, most of the time. And he Look, I'd have back about 1935. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah. So, interesting enough to tell me that, uh, of course, he was during, during the Depression, you know, uh, he said the uh, uh, least amount of money he made was uh, 37 half cents an hour. And he, was a, he was a foreman. And, he, and the laborers were getting 25 cents an hour. And then uh, as it was a common practice during then that they would hire, instead of hiring Say eight men for eight hours, they'd hire eight men for four hours. They work half a day, then another group come in and work half a day. So instead of having, uh, say, instead of having just eight men well, work all day, they'd have 16 men in the job. But you know, back during the Depression, though, yeah. he had the extra gang. Yeah, we did do us. And they'd hire up to maybe four, 50 people, really. Yeah, well, I, I can did. remember when I had a kid, people come during the Depression, come to the house looking for jobs, you know, with them. Yeah, well, extra gangs would be, they'd be the one who would come in and would work, they would, uh, Really, the ties and rails. They didn't the summer month. They did a hard great groups of men. Uh, say probably 50 or 60 men that would, uh, that would do this. They called it that reason they called him extra extra game or, or train. And he did that probably every summer because he was a he was considered one of the better foremen. And he, I know he, he's turned down opportunities to go to go higher up and be a superintendent and things there, but he didn't care for that. Like where he was. <laughs> what do you, do you think? Well, I know that when. Your dad worked for the railroad. You got passes. Yes. And so, what type of train trips did your family take? Oh, well, we went to uh, Middletown. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, it was easy to go to Middletown to go to Hamilton. We and the local ran every day and it stopped there and you go to Middletown and get off and then it'd come back about four or five hours later. But uh, we did take a trip. We uh, actually went to Tennessee uh, when. Uh, you did, I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, anyway, we, we went to Tennessee that and. Uh, 
that I remember later on I went to Chicago uh, one time and, that's, and it's about the two, about two long trips I made. I know, I guess, that's good. Anybody well, else? Really, we talk back, back in the 30s, well, people didn't go on vacation like they do today. They didn't, everybody stayed home. In fact, a lot of them didn't even have vacation, paid vacations or stuff like that. If you want to go on a vacation, you lay it off. You just, nobody can afford to lay off to go on a vacation. Think anything more about the railroad? I know when I was a kid, the railroad always brought interesting people into our town. <laughs> that weren't paying uh, passengers. They just kind of we call them hobos. Oh yeah, okay, we had those. <laughs> did you ever have they come to your house? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I think they had house art. Yeah, <laughs> they did that. Was, uh, yeah, we come there, come all the time, and uh, uh, the mom used them uh, sometimes. But some would they would add, you know, if you had any work for them. Of course, we had some boys we had worked you know, all over the dog right. already, but yeah, we had a few of those. Uh, but nothing I can, uh, I don't remember, I don't remember any outstanding events of, of those. Do you recall any, uh, What's that? any hobos? Not, I can remember one fellow came there one time. He was having mom a hard time. Well, it really wasn't. He was trying to solve something, and she kept saying no, and, and I finally, I kind of, Got tired of him. I made him leave off the porch. And when they left the porch, there was a old wagon wheel in there. I took the wagon wheel at him, <laughs> and that's when Uncle Ace gave me a good lick. <laughs> he took me out underneath the apple tree and wore me out. <laughs> he talked about Uncle Ace whipping you. Dad always bragged it. Uh, I said he had seven boys, never never had whip any of them. <laughs> he had help from somebody else all the time. My mom, 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 mom whipped with a switch. He had a switch. And, and uh, she also had an old uh, a half of a yardstick that it was one of those real thick ones. I mean, it wasn't uh, real, real things like that now. That was, that was kind of, uh, but if she was outside, she just cut a switch off the tree and she ran around your bare legs and your. I remember, <laughs> pulled, my, pulled my collar and hit the back right. of my legs. But, uh, yeah, I, don't, I, I don't remember, uh, I don't remember Ted ever even chastising even me, I mean, uh... Well, he did one time out there behind the garage. I was yeah. smoking corn <laughs> silk, and he called me. I don't know who was with me, but I'm sure I wasn't by myself. Well, it wasn't me. <laughs> it might have been back bars or somebody yeah. like that. Well, he, uh, caught, well, he caught Ernie, or I'm caught Ernie and I smoking one time with your cigarettes, by the way. And anyway, I was, uh, uh, just getting ready to go to high school, really. And uh, anyway, he called and he, Calls up and we down the outhouse and one thing so I went in the kitchen so Dad was in the living room and called and Ernie went in first and I get grounded Ernie for a couple of weeks and I went in there he kind of just talking a little bit he didn't ground me he did I remember him saying no you think you're old enough to smoke and I said well I didn't think I was I said well you're enough to smoke don't be sneaking by your brother's pack and go buy them and you buy your own but uh, you know don't be <laughs> sneaking them out but Teddy kind of kind of uh, on the idea that I was going to be playing basketball and know if I, the coach would approve me of smoking and all that, you know. It was a very effective speech, and he kept me from smoking for about four years. In fact, I never, never did really smoke. But you never did smoke, sir, isn't Never did. Fortunately, it's rather quick. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, he, didn't, he didn't ground me about it, but he did earn it. For, but Ernie was the one that, uh, you know, he was for about one per the time. He, was, he must have been grounded uh, most of the year, because he just turned off one, and something else was happening, and daddy ground him again. Like one thing was, um, talk about trains, uh, Used to have the uh, old freight trains were so big that they used a hill engine to bring two engines up to um, Sharonville. It was stopped here at the mods, and then the hill engine would switch off and go back to Sharonville. In the meantime, the train would be sitting there for maybe, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And uh, so if you were back down the lower end of the track, you go on the train, you could ride it up to the, almost the depot before you jumped off. And all the kids in the mods would do that just for it to have to be down that way, plan or something. So Ernie got caught. He would really, the train too far along. He could get off at the crossing, and the tiger for saw him. <laughs> And Red and I even told Dad about it, or Ernie was, <laughs> Ernie was another grunt for two more weeks. Why dangerous? Well, it would go, go fast enough. It wasn't moving that fast. Years they, ago, when they had that hill engine on, yeah. they used to have it on the caboose. They put it in the caboose. Yeah. Then they outlawed it because the hill engine was going through the caboose. And so they made them double up coming up the mods. And when they got, well, it's about there to cross. And then they switched that one off, didn't they? Send him back. Yeah. But the depot down there used to be a big thing down there, really, yeah. because uh, they were, uh, man, I don't know how many switches they had in there. They, they could work, you know. They had two sidings and everything, and 
uh, had one on the east side and another one on the west side. Then he also had another one switched in to the board store. He had a, a side and the other one right, right on down to the edge of Townsville Road. They brought in coal and grain and also uh, a lot of people used to order things that came in by train. They just parked the Bacar, the uh, Bacar down there until the people got unloaded and they would hold out. You know, always, they always had uh, cars sitting on the siding. And one day I can remember, <laughs> remember this day, uh, I guess I was moving the cars in. Anyway, it broke through the retaining thing. It was just the and train went right across the, the one car went right across the road, went it piled into the building, yeah. the warehouse there at the store. And, uh, knocked it down. Knocked it down. Pretty bad. Yeah. Was that the only derailment? Well, well, really, well, no. See, there, there's a grade going down, and, and then they, and the engines used to cut the, the, the car off, and they'd roll down by themselves. Mm. But at the end, they, they had blocks down they there. Blocked the top of the stuff, the train. And then this one got away from them. Because usually the guy on most cars, I don't know if are that way or there or not, but there's a, there's a wheel up there that they yeah, uh, yeah, use yeah. for brake. That's what it was, brake. And uh, evidently, the guy who was supposed to work the brake didn't work. That was it. Sometimes they had to think down from right across the road down there. Across the road. Plowed into the building and back to the board for years that uh, you see the tracks of the tra uh, across the road, you see the, where the ruts are. I always heard the story, you know, the group's office was back there yeah. behind that building, and he was on crutches. He walked on crutches all the time. And they said they would see the thing coming, they got up and walked out of that building <laughs> without his crutch. <laughs> well, well, I heard the same thing to the point when the store burned down, too. I heard the same thing. So I went. Yeah. Yeah, Rump was the. Uh, he was the first brothers that were in the store. And there's three, I guess three brothers that owned the store. And uh, Grump, uh, his name was Lewis, really. Lewis the board, but I got some Grump. But he had, I guess he had polio or something. He was, he was in crutches. And he did all the bookkeeping work, the office and everything back there. And I got all, all that. And the other two actually ran the store. So. Where happened to Dad's ledger from the store? Because I know he's, uh, uh, if we could collect any of the money that was on it, we could have it. I never saw it. <laughs> Didn't yeah. you ever see it? Uh, he had it there. I sh after uh, after I got back out of service, I was still out there in that well, drawer. Have, well, he, I remember the drawer kept locked. No. I know told Don the same thing. If, if you want to take the money, if you click it, you can have it. <laughs> this is 20 years after he was in the business. You know. so. <laughs> they were just all local people around right here. Yeah still, yeah, still here, yeah. You know, that thing you talking about, he was talking earlier. Uh, what we did, you know, growing up, and uh, biggest, of course, in the summer months, you worked uh, for the farms around here. Yes. And uh, I mean, the first farm I worked for, uh, about where Walmart is, Maddox had a farm. I put a pay, I put a pay, they're only 12 years old. And uh, for Maddox? For Maddox. <laughs> I worked for him. <laughs> now I worked for the, for the platform on the baler. Yeah. All day. The Maddox was, first uh, job I had out on the farms out there were. Uh, Voice of America was out there. Yeah, Miller. Okay. Miller, 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 Coy. Miller. Yeah, Miller, yeah. Miller, I worked for him. And, and that too. was so hot that summer, and I worked, and then I was pitching hay up to the wagon, and it's not like today. They, you got to the pitch work, and they loaded it on a wagon, and then you take it into the barn, and, and he had to put it up in the hay loft, and man, it was so hot. That's the first job that I ever quit, like, because <laughs> it, you just couldn't stand it, you know. We came with it, didn't. The doors came when you had to bail it, and that's why it was much a little easier. The other one we worked what it on was down to the uh, Baum Farm, and they owned five acres, and most of it's Union Center now. And uh, kind of uh, bail hay or uh, kill potatoes. And the thing about the Baum I liked is that they had dairy cattle, and so the way when you went to waste place, you to work in the hay season, they wouldn't start until dew off the ground. So that meant you had, uh, you wouldn't leave. I mean, Mrs. Bowman come pick us up about 9 o'clock and 30. It wouldn't start till about 10 or 10.30. You'd have about, you take about two loads of hay in the barn, then you would have lunch. Then uh, come 4.30, they quit because they had to get a milk cow. So you worked relatively short hours, and they paid, they paid better than anybody around. And some of these farmers were working from, they working from 7 o'clock till dark for the same amount of money, like 4 or $5 a day, you know. And uh, so I was like the... Uh, you made 4 or $5 a day? <laughs> I made six dollars a day. Make <laughs> you pay hour like I was a dollar a day. You got one or two dollars, yeah. But uh, it was going to war in place. <laughs> See, when I, the people that lived in this house here, the Pippins, and he worked over at Western States, over Hamilton there. And for some reason, they, they took a look at me when I was 16 years old. He got me a job over there. I worked over at Western States during the summer. Then when school started, I'd go back to school. And when school was out, I went back to work out there. I was lucky. 
I, uh, well, I, I made the, uh, when I took taxes and everything out, I was making $19 a week, and that was pretty good money. <laughs> Real good money. But, you know, I, I saved that, a lot of that money, and, uh, and uh, my sister-in-law, my brother and her sister got married. He was in the Navy, and he was stationed out at uh, California, and uh, this girlfriend of hers uh, wanted to go to Wanda. <laughs> I don't know, I'll tell you the truth, I don't know her name. But I gave her all the money that I saved that summer to go to California. And she bought a suitcase. And I've never seen it since. <laughs> well, her, her name was Wanda, right? Was it? Yeah. She hit up everybody, and I think, in Butler County for money to want. <laughs> you know, funny thing you told me, uh, this is our, I was Clyde wife, and uh, she'd gone to go, go company her to California. And I get a time to hit the Missouri River, or Mississippi River, she'd already. <laughs> she took up some guys or something, and Evelyn said never saw her after that. So, uh, so what? And, uh, and you find that's her going out there, already. I find that's her. <laughs> I remember, remember that. I saved about well, a couple of hundred, three hundred dollars I gave her. Many of the wholesalers talked to Elkhorn, too, from Ganoa or from Are you from Ganoa? Yes. No, yeah. Definitely. So, California was a very popular trip. People in this area too. So I'm not really surprised this one. Maybe she came movies are, guys. I don't know. I, don't <laughs> I think she. I think she made a California. I, I, I remember Evelyn. Yeah, Evelyn she did. I think I got a letter from Evelyn or something about. Yeah, but she was. Evelyn was over there. You helped with a sailor or some base. <laughs> During the war, though, I uh, uh, had a family go up Fred Cornette. This back in, in Second Street, back in the early drive, and, and his dad owned all the land back there, and they. Kind of start building houses and things there. But then when the uh, uh, Fred built a wood uh, wood manufacturing shop, a pretty good size. He was making uh, different things. And during the war, was making uh, work back there, making pop cases. And, and somehow there, he got a contract to make uh, 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 cases, wooden cases for incendiary bombs for King's Mills. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're doing that with that was pretty, that was pretty uh, good. He hired uh, that was about ten or twelve of us working back there. And I can remember. When the uh, last day of the war, uh, we to that morning, fed up uh, uh, these boxes probably uh, be two feet, maybe about two feet by two feet and by eight inches high, and it is real three quarter inch wood, and we have cardboard partition went inside of the separate. I could put eight or ten, or maybe a dozen of these bombs. In. Anyway, uh, on the last day, we went from a real huddle. I think she's up in the uh, had the truck come, uh, we loaded up the uh, truck. And we, came, and we came home, we weren't going to do any more. And we got home about 2 o'clock. About 2 o'clock, uh, <laughs> Miss Cornette called and says, Come back to the guy on these boxes. They take them over there, and, and King Bills wouldn't accept them. They quick, they cut the, cut the thing off. And here were about 50 or 60 of these uh, bomb cases that they would take. And, and that was over towards Marlowe? Uh, that's well, right there, no, right outside of Mason, Kings Mills. Right okay. Yeah, that's where that's where Kings Mills, that's where, uh, Kings Mills, that's where it was a big pot company. That's right. And, uh, were there bombs there? Yeah, well, I, I made uh, all kinds of ammunition. I guess I made bombs, and uh, they had several closures. I can remember hearing, uh, you could hear, both hear, hear and just shake the house and everything. Uh, but they had a, uh, they had a lot of these, uh, understanding a lot of uh, uh, small outbuildings. They would store this powder and things in. Mm -hmm. So when it was one month, it didn't take the whole plan out. But so they had several of these, uh, uh, I guess, or, a uh, small storage area, but uh, for some reason they'd go up. And the thing they had a lot of, uh, that's the time you had a lot of traffic on Tosh Road Road because a lot of people that worked there were found in Hamilton. And in fact, even ran a bus. Buses would run uh, through, uh, it started about 6 o'clock in the morning, and they'd be taking maybe three or four buses going over, and it all head back. And that's one time, that's why one time you go to Hamilton fairly easy. And that uh, come in the evening, it'd be a power spot because it's going the other way. But uh, that was, uh, back in the days when they did have everybody cars. <laughs> so, in fact, we had to deliver papers uh, to over the pub. In fact, uh, our last customers were at Hoshul is. We used to, have to walk over there, and, and, uh, and, and uh, there's a house across the street with a farmer's cross street from her. That was a, we walked during the bank, had six or seven customers <laughs> for two cents. You make two cents. <laughs> what clients do you remember? Oh, yeah. Which ones? <laughs> Yeah. Charlie and, and uh, Russell, yeah. Okay. Did you, were you working for Kingsmill area? Did you 
Did you ride by over there? I never worked there. No, I was too young, but I see uh, uh, the people who did work there from Hamilton. There. Yeah, okay. So I did, I did work uh, one year in a cannon factory in, over in Mason, cannon uh, corn. And, uh, well, I think I think, I, I think it's been, uh, been out for 20 years. I think they finally told the building down. But I, I, I really like that. I enjoyed it. It was kind of easy. I mean, oh, yeah, my, our job was, and they had the, um, they had the corn come in behind uh, the rack. It, it has a gate, and it just popped down behind you, and, the, and the, the machine that you just put the gear of corn in, it go down, it would cut the end off and chuck it. Yeah. It fell down below, and these girls or ladies there would clean it up, and, and they would clean it up, and they'd have to chuck the corn, you know, take well, the corn off. Once they had license, they pushed on it, they would take that corn cob and take that off yeah, well, at least in this, this is the old days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, all the machine I have all did was just husk it. And uh, that that's all the husk it. You, put oh. it, you had to put it in a certain way, go down, and then the whole corner would fall down below, and you had these girls and these right, women in line, and they can clean it up, and they would use a knife. Use a knife, cut it off. And, off. and, yeah. it, and they, they ran as a conveyor, and got down to put a can, and they, can they steamed it. So <laughs> that was, I, I, that's, what, that's the easiest job I had <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> I mean, for, for far work, really. That was hard work. You, you know, lifting bells and you know, back during the war, we had the bus service out here. Yeah, but the from Hamilton to yeah. Kings Mill, yeah. Cincinnati, Dayton. Yeah, used all the way up to the Yeah. yeah I know. It ran. It ran by yard too, or at least uh, in the rush yards it might run every hour, maybe every, every half hour. And then later on in the middle of the day, I don't run one or two trips, but it goes to Cincinnati or go to Dayton either one. And uh, I can remember I never went to Cincinnati from Maudtown, but when I was in service. Uh, several times I'd catch a bus from down there and come home, and it didn't wait too long for one. When I'd gone to barber school, I rode bus every day, so it's not a... So how did your brothers became barbers? Just Ernie and I. Two, two out of seven. Yeah. And there was five out of seven working the Redwood for either summertime or uh, uh, old, old, uh, most of the work there just during the summertime. Just wanted to go. Like you raised, raised, no, he's only never worked on a railroad. Uh, we, <laughs> uh, Ernie, I talked him into going to barber school. And uh, when the guy finished barber school, he worked a little bit down in Sharonville, and he went in the service. And when he got out of the service, I had a shop over in Hamilton over there, and, and I was desperate for a barber. And I asked Ernie to come in and help me out till I could find a barber. Well, I never have found one yet. <laughs> And he's still a barber. And I'm still working. You are. Not very much, but I'm working. It's good to be busy. Oh, yeah, I, I, uh, I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Have you got my hair? Huh? Oh. Is that what you're doing? Just time of year? <laughs> um, well, I, I kind of want to touch base on the railroad. And uh, I know that there were, in the old archives, I'm going through there a lot of freight. Uh, brochures and how yeah. much it cost. And so I know the township probably ordered a lot of things and they came in, yeah, but, you know, machinery and parts. And well, yeah, the uh, moss down there, they, they were Railroad Express yes. down there. And uh, like you say, I guess uh, about everybody in the township would bring stuff in down there. I mean, you know, her, her ship yeah, there. Yeah, that was a big shooting center, yeah. yeah. And another rest of thing talking about the railroad, if you remember, you know, they had the, uh, you had the telegraphers because you know at the, at the depot. But the other thing, but they, it would give the messages to the uh, train people by uh, maybe uh, by a big hoop. They would have, in other words, if they wanted yeah, that big hoop, and they just clip the message to the end of it and take that big thing on. And the, the uh, telegrapher would stand there and hold it up. And the engineer would put his arm through it, take the message off, throw the hoop off, then send the conductor at the end of the patient of freight. But what's the battle of freight trains was going to be pretty slow, but a passenger train go through. And 50, 60, I mean, different story. And I guess they did this one Another twice. Thing, all the mail that come in there came through the railroad. And, uh, down there, they had this, uh, these arms that stick out, and you know, they put the mail bag on that arm, and, and some I don't know, engineer, somebody would grab it, or, and they, if there was any way we lifted mods, they just threw the bag out, and then somebody from down to the post office would come in and pick it up and take it down there. Well, I know there were a lot of people involved with the railroad here as well as in Westchester and now. There are a lot of them in, you know, Shoe Walters and mm -hmm. uh, Raffles. Raffles, yeah, all the road, yeah. Involved in it. A few others, I'm sure. Uh, they made a good living for everybody. They scared everybody off. 
Well, they, you know, I don't know how deep it down or not, but I was a Westchester had one, but that was closed up. Close when quicker. I was a kid, that was closed up. I was walking back with that. Then up the cow station, they had a station up there, but they closed all that up back in the, must have been back in the 30s. Yeah, I don't remember them, but, uh, that's one about that. He been a foreman. He worked. Uh, he also worked Saturdays. He worked 48 hours a week, which made it a little bit better. But uh, he would uh, on Saturday he got to inspect his tracks. So he would walk. He would walk his entire uh, section was 10 miles, and he walked his entire uh, section every Saturday. He and walked with, we'd go with him. Just walk along with him, you know. I walk, yeah. used to walk with him every Saturday. Yep. We walked down to the old man. Uh, they would turn around, come to Mars by noon, and from noon you go up to Cow Station. Was that was well, I went, uh, when I went with him, he was work, he was he had the, he had the call station uh, section, which ran from Hughes uh, Road up there up to uh, Middletown. That was always good, nice experience. Always walked on the road tracks. <laughs> Killed day, took it all day, you know. And of course, you walked you, you walked uh, at all, but sometimes. Probably the closest between two points was the railroad track. Yeah. Towns and yeah. villages. Sort of like the buffalo trains that became right yeah. for people to walk in. Towards the right direction anyway. Jump to the side of the train. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was hoping my dad would say, you know, because he worked, uh, used uh, motor cars, the, the section people would, that's how they traveled, you know. And usually he'd call the, and the foreman had called and the same thing would come. And dad would, when he was, uh, I guess, up from Cal Station, he went to go, plus he called the depot down there and he said, uh, it was all clear. So Dad said, yeah, I was in the car and went down the road and didn't go a mile. I saw this passenger train come toward. He said, Dad, he just got he said, he just got off and the train hit the, his motor car. Oh. <laughs> and he said, the, the, the telegraph, old Rosie, he, said, he, he just forgot. When he called me, he said, oh, yeah, I think he forgot what time it was or whatever. Gotcha. And he said, well, once, once the, I mean, once he got the phone, there's no way to get a hold of it. I mean, but Dad said that several close calls, but sometimes he would have time to get a, Throw the car off the track. Something that one time he didn't have enough time. time, huh? <laughs> didn't have enough time. No, I mean, usually he'd pick up a schedule when the trains were coming through. Yeah, but the war, they, they, oh, they didn't have a schedule. Yeah. And all, you know, you never knew. I mean, the, well, I wasn't around here during yeah, the war. So. When that was, uh, but most of the trains, like, they didn't have a car here. Huh? Did you say he had one yet? Car, uh, motor car, yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Either a motor car or the, uh, or the uh, something he had side cars that we would pull with them. Well, some, he, 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 he used to have. have and uh, uh, the old car. Yeah, well, yeah, they did have a little bit. They did have these uh, cars they pulled. Well, the strange thing is, he had a, uh, he was a signalman. Uh, ben, and ben Farrell did that really the way. He was a signalman from uh, Mods. And uh, one day he was in the depot, and he got in an argument with either the legger or somebody. His, his uh, car was, a uh, motor car was sitting down uh, off the uh, crossing. And we, we, we rushed down there and pushed his motor car on the track, and he didn't get 20 feet in the train heading. And he knew it was coming. He just, he just, uh, but you can imagine he was. The, he put the motor car on right across him, and he didn't get just past the depot. And it, uh, it's, I mean, not Who was that? Ben Farrell. Ben Farrell. Yeah, I know he got hit. Well, I mean, it just, I mean, just that nobody could figure out. He knew the train was coming, and I mean, it was about to do. I was trying to think of his first name. Uh, the only thing that I come up with, Dean. Uh, that was, that was the boy. Was boys. But, but, uh, they just couldn't figure out what went. I guess he was. I guess he was. Had but you'd have a little bit of temper. He got and uh, then we had a, he had a, um, well his grandsons was in my class in school. And I can remember when they came in. God, they you know, got my class to tell me. Richard took his job, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. So, but I guess I say I didn't scan happen. <laughs> Were there any real derailments? Derail not around here. Not real close, but did have. I remember some in uh, uh, the north, particularly. I can remember one time, uh, Dad was. In our house, we didn't eat dinner until Dad got home. You know, that's most of the time, he, he, we always he got to regular time, but every once in a while, he'd be on a uh, place like an uh, uh, emergency or a deer one or something. He wouldn't get home till maybe a couple hours after normal eating time. We still couldn't eat till, you know. I remember, I remember it was one time at uh, about 9 o'clock, Mom finally decided to eat. Then Dad ended up working. He was, he was on the rail up uh, between Milltown and Dayton, and he worked like, uh, Probably 24 or 30 hours straight. It was like next they, day before he got home. They were had a deal wind up between uh, uh, View Station and Carroll Station. I can remember that. That was back. Well, well it must have been before I went to service because I wouldn't have known it.
This is when this had one word, and he had a big fire, but they never could get the fire out. <laughs> oh, I think a couple of times the fire out of there. This was this when they built the railroad. They had a lot of cinders or coal in there, and, and somehow they caught fire and they burned. But they must have burned for for a year up there. But had to, well, the old uh, demons with it, it's what caught coals. It killed them, rest fires and, and everything. But I remember going with him a couple of times when he had a fish on weekend, and he hard time getting the guy to go. He went from Beat the, the, the devil, the, you know, the ground with a little broom and everything, beat out the fire. So. Yeah, those are probably uh, coal. Yeah, coal, old coal, coal, yeah, coal are, yeah. No steam? That would be the coal that made steam. Well, I know, but. It's <laughs> true, you're right. <laughs> I want to take them, I guess. But you see these, uh, a lot of these cool engines, they'd be parked down here. Just, uh, in fact, you see them our house would be just past the uh, creek, and they'd be sitting there, and you see a lot of times that. They dump their ashes by sitting there waiting, you know, and, and you and, uh, also they do, you know, like, let's say, blow the, what, you see the sparks flying and smoke would come out. They never, they don't have fuel engines here anymore, do they? No, the old diesel, well, they just, yeah, but they put four or five diesel on there, on some of them trains. <laughs> I got a lot of books on trains or engines over there in the barbershop, and I've, and these steam engines are, are more powerful on these diesel. And the problem with the steam engine was they couldn't uh, get enough traction on it the wheels to spin. And they couldn't start them out real slow like they do a, a diesel, you know. When they start them out, they, the wheels would spin on the track. And, and it, uh, that's when the diesel got powerful. Yeah, they used to have a, huh? they drop sand on the, on the wheels. Well, they, 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 had a, they had what they call sand marks on them. To get a little more traction, just drop the sand in these stills. Well, I know that, you know, you know, there was a gentleman there, Little, is his last name? Or Long's Little family, but he's a mid, and they used to use him. That was his job with the railroads to go into the same area, clean that, mm -hmm. before the train went back out again. Yeah. He's the only one who fit in, <laughs> you know? Well, that's the first time for that one. <laughs> yeah, Jim talks about it yeah. all the time. Well, the uh, Charing Arts, that was huge. It was oh, really yeah. old. Boy, it was really, uh, really big, and I guess it, uh, you get get lost down in there. But, oh, it's hard to believe. Mm -hmm. But then Sherman House there, too. Yeah, another, yeah, right around yeah. Sherman Road. They yeah. still have that turntable down there, don't they? No, it's all, huh? it's all no. torn out. Well, they don't have to have turntables anymore. No, it's all torn out. Mm -hmm. and I have to have tracks gone. And, and uh, I have to do one. one of the big, big hunt is all taken out, and the, you know, we went across the... Kemper Road, and they took, they took the bridge out and everything. Took the Kemper and Sharon Road. In fact, on uh, the year of summer, I worked on the road. I was in the signal gang in our our office right there on uh, Sharon Road, just right right by the where where the uh, hump was, right just east of, just west of the. Yeah, I guess I'm thinking that down there is the old uh, big four house, the old hotel. Yeah, it used to be a white white YMCA there. there. By the railroad, I think it's showing they still there. Most Isn't buildings are all. Oh, no, I don't know. What? Not too long I think they, they uh, didn't they remodel or uh, yeah. restore the Re railroad Re station? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's not down where the roundhouse was at. Well, it was right. She talking about YMCA building. Oh, they restored yeah. that? Yeah. Did they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought that's where the guys used to spend. That's where, that's where they were, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, they come in, they'd come in from, I don't know, maybe Dayton or by Cleveland or someplace. They'd Stay there and that day get a train back the other way. Mm -hmm. uh, the other, the bottom of Mount Sharonville, but Mount Sharonville, they went to Bell Fountain. They turned around and come back. That's Jim did. Yeah. yeah. That was a big, that was big. Yeah. Or the Y up there, there. Or the all day, they go, you know, go was he an engineer? Pardon? Was he an engineer? Yes. Was he? Mm -hmm. His dad worked on the road, too, didn't he? Yes, he did. He? Yeah. Like that car. Huh? So, what about Paul? Pardon? What about Paul? Did he work on the no, road? Paul didn't work on the road, oh. to my knowledge. He kind of went a different way. Bob didn't work on it. No, he didn't. That's the one I was thinking about. Yeah. Bob was the oldest, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. He went into the catering business. Yeah, he went catering. Yeah, food, food business. Oh, are they still in? Yeah, well, his son, Pat, runs Raffle Catering down in Evendale. Because we used them one time at a reunion. Didn't you use them? Yeah, that's who. We used them both times. We huh? used them both times we had a reunion. I don't remember the second one. <laughs> well, the second one, I actually should remember that at least when that was one. Out of the Kinner's Park? Yeah, both of those out of the Kinner's Park. Well, I don't know when I went out the one time. When were I at the first time? He's out there. You just don't remember that. 
First it was 90, 90, two or three. Okay, we, I was married to Vivian when we had one out here. Well, no, but yeah, we had, but we had, you say 93? 93. Okay, we got married in 1990. Well, Bill was, and all of here, I remember. Mm -hmm. Then the past, of course, Latin was, gee, three years ago, I guess, or four years ago. Yeah. yeah. When I said, I don't remember going out to then. But you, well, they're not using the union elementary at all anymore? No, I got uh, two. They went to the Shamville. Yeah, so yeah, so they worked out yeah. pretty That's what we got. Was you, just, you, you missed your points. You missed it. Just had one. I know. I thought it all was coming up. My class is having a reunion. Be a week from the coming Saturday. Where are you going to be? At West Butler's house. Well, I don't know him. Huh? You don't know him? <laughs> what, does he live, you know, does he live in Westchester? Yeah, you know, they let on uh, Homer and, and they let on uh, Westchester. I know where they live. Where does he live? Oh, now? Yeah. He lives in Fairfield. So I say, you I go know. to Mississippi Drive and I, can, I don't know what name that street is back there. Yeah. Well, I don't think I've ever been in my community where faithfully they have these class reunions like they do at Communion. We have, you know? my class, we've had three times already this summer. Is that right? But, uh, uh, but, uh, well, uh, our house has never met in 50 years. Well, really? you don't have, you, you got people are, uh, here, uh, back in, well, when Mary Louise, I got that yeah. thing from the school. Uh, the kind of, have you ever seen one of them? Yeah. Uh, okay, and they got the history of the school behind them. Yeah. Well, you told us about the last time. Yeah. We well, we was, we met old, uh, Bob Evans down there. And, well, I don't even want to call it down there, Union Central. That's what they call it. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then her, again, that, then we went, well, after Mary Louise died, we, and the, most of us were there at the, at the funeral home, so afterward we went, Frisha's down there, Moss, or down there on Old Tazeville Road, or in the 25, yeah. and so, and we're going to have another reunion here next, I guess it's a week from. Well, I, well, I don't know where I found out about Mary Louise, you, you're talking about when I was here last night. Yeah, she was going to have an operation, yeah. and she didn't get off the table. Yeah. I'd love her. Yeah. 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 Well, I've never had them. Okay. Yeah. I've never had them. Yeah. As well as the story I want to tell you, uh, uh, you know, we talk, uh, last time I talked about the high wind up the Cincinnati Dayton Road. Yeah. It's set right at the end of Weatherton Drive. In fact, the remnants of the, uh, they had, they had uh, five or six cabins, and the remnants of the cabins are still there. All right. There were, and they, uh, people live there now, a uh, house there runs a, a a garage door, they do garage doors. But anyway, that's what they uh, had this place called Hawaii and it was only, uh, in, uh, was in high school, it was only the closest place you go to sandwich or anything. But anyway, uh, uh, one night we, uh, there was four, but we worked back here in the, the Fed Cornet space and making pockets and things. And anyway, uh, this one guy bought a no wheels car and an old beat thing and, and he didn't have any license for it. And usually we used to walk up, just walk, we'd just walk up the red track and, up, and, and going up the, there and have a, usually a, Coke or something, played the football machine, only stayed half hours and came home with it. And anyway, he had his old Willie's car, trying to get it going. And we just, you know, so we decided we were going to ride it up. So we got through okay. And uh, so we was in the drive, we had Coke, and we was coming back. It was, it was dark, it was about to be like 10 o'clock at night. And we just barely pulled up on the Cincinnati Dayton Road. And I was in the back seat, and I turned around and looked, I could see his headlights coming down, coming down on us. We were going like five miles hour. They were going faster than that. And in the meantime, they had uh, a cow dog that had followed us up. And he was, he was uh, running on the inside of the road. And, this, and then we, I looked and I saw his car coming. I thought he was going to cream us. But he swerved and missed us. He hit a dog. And he was going down and he went over the bank. Down that, from that curve, he's on the bank. That's, that's before he filled in quite. He went way down in there. Anyway, one of the guys that owned the dog jumped up, threw the dog in the car. And we go by and we looked down. We couldn't, we didn't see anybody or see, see anything. And, but we just we didn't stop. I mean, anyway, anyway, I didn't sleep very well that night. I just imagine we got killed or badly hurt, or anything, you know. So I went to school and uh, we all we didn't we didn't talk about it or anything either. So I was, when I came back and uh, read the papers, uh, the gas station down there in the corner was used kind of the folk punk world gospel. And so I went over there and find out that this car had been stolen out of, De out of Detroit, and uh, so I never did find the occupants. It was just one guy or two guys. What happened? They, uh, so they figured that they just uh, flagged down somebody and got a ride away from there. So that, <laughs> that eased my mind quite a bit because you can, but, uh, that was a very few times I really worried about anything. But uh, I thought, sure, we... Well, what happened to the dog? 
I guess he lived. I guess he got. Well, he was lived. Uh, okay. uh, they the uh, one was one, one was uh, guy was Don Cornett and he had two were two brothers. Uh, but uh, the dad was a railroader. He's an engineer. He lived, they lived back in uh, on Sex Street back there. And there was all, we were all at the same. Well, uh, one summer we hung around pretty much. You know, we worked together. And, and uh, well, uh, I didn't say work together because uh, uh, Don and uh, one of, I forgot the other one's name, they worked down at uh, Chernobyl in the Chern Depot, military depot. They worked down there. <laughs> I that's some of my dumb things. They anyway, uh, I, uh, the boys, the family name was Seekers, but anyway, the Seekers boy had he took some uh, uh, 30 caliber bullets, took a box of bullets. He took, took out somewhere that in the bowl, but he 